putting some Baldur's Gate cards into Arena. And they're probably going to announce some tweaks and things to some of the um, card rules, decks, yada yada, because not all of it plays well in Arena. Basically, all they've done is reinforce this idea that they're never going to uh, put Commander in Arena properly. Which blows. Let's go to green. Acolyte of Bahamut. One and a green for a legendary enchantment background. Commander creatures you own have the first dragon spell you cast each turn costs two less to cast. Make red and green dragon decks. That's what this card is saying. Next we have Ambitious Dragonborn. Three and a green for a zero zero dragon barbarian ambitious dragonborn enters the battlefield with x11 counters on it where x is the greatest power amongst creatures you control and creature cards in your graveyards have big ass dragons this dragon gets ambitious and wants to copy it great math checks out that's a good card oh uh ancient bronze dragon so this is the ancient dragon for green Five green green for a seven seven elder dragon creature with flying. Whenever ancient bronze dragon deals combat damage to a player, roll a d20. When you do, put x one one counters on each of up to two target creatures, where x is the result. So if you roll a nat twenty, you can put two. You can make two creatures plus twenty plus twenty instantly, just because this thing dealt combat damage to a player. These ancient dragons are nutty, and I love it. Uh, next, we've got Avenging Hunter, four and a green for a 5-4 dragon ranger. Lots of dragons, green, Tr with trample. Whenever Avenging Hunter enters a battlefield, you take the initiative. Five mana for a 5-4 with trample. That's already par. Give it the initiative buff, and we've got an above par card. Band to get, oh my god. This is an image of Minsk eating boo. I don't know what to say to that. I don't, there's nothing to add really. That's just a fact. That's what I'm looking at. This is. Um. Yep. Giving Boo the old yeet. And he looks really happy to do it, too. A little terrifying, but generally happy. So band together is two and a green for an instant. Up to two target creatures you control. Each deal damage equal to their power to another target creature. You can, it's basically a two against one fight card. Which is... That's pretty cool, actually. Next up, we have Barroom Brawl. So this is the card that um, Loading Ready Run folks had as their preview card. They did an amazing video on it. Um, gotta go check it out. If you don't follow them, definitely follow them. Barroom Brawl is one and a green for a sorcery. Target creature you control fights target creature. you Your opponent to your left controls. So automatically, this is about par. Generally, fight cards are two mana. And the only downside to this so far is that you have to choose from opponents, from the opponent on your left. Then, that player may choose to copy this spell and may choose new targets for the copy. But because they're copying it, their, co their copy of it says target opponent to your left this is going to continuously if no one says no this is going to continuously go in a circle and it just becomes this huge brawl uh great card great flavor great execution um yeah love it i'm interested to see this art a little bit bigger it kind of looks like 
weird and shiny and I don't know. I don't love this art. But we don't have to love all the art. The card is good. I don't play green, but the card is good. Next up, we have Bramble Sovereign. Two green, green for a 4-4 four, four Dryad. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield, you may pay two. If you do, that creature's controller creates a token that's a copy of that creature. So if it's you, you can just keep copying tokens. Sorry, not tokens. Creatures. Turn them. Copies are tokens. Uh, it's kind of like that set of Ascendance. No, Ascendancy was Adversaries from Innistrad, where, you know, you can pay to create a copy of it. Every time you play a creature, you can pay to. Um, I think that's pretty cool. You just make copies. Better yet, if you put Bramble Sovereign in your Bolo deck that copies creatures you play, then you're looking at the... Oh, I've got him right now. Bolo Guide to Monsters. Clutch. This boy is great. Um, he reads, whenever you cast a creature spell that doesn't share a creature type with a creature you control or a creature in your graveyard, copy that spell. So, this is, this is your commander. Play your Dryad here, your Bramble Sovereign, and you can copy um, the creature on Bolo by just casting it. And then Bramble Sovereign, you can play another two and make another copy of it. Um, yeah. The copy of the creature is a token, so it only triggers the once, but either way, Bramble Sovereign plus Volo equals two copies of everything. So three total. Carefree Swine Master. Oh, the big pig with flowers on, around it. Two and a red for a 1-4 Gnome Ranger. When Carefree Swine Master attacks, you may pay two, one and a green. If you do, create a 2-2 green boar creature token that's tapped and attacking. Aggro Pigs. Love it. Dip it. I'd probably say the, car the card is on par in general. Three mana for a 1-4 is not bad. Three mana for a 1-4 that also makes boar tokens. Pretty good. Circle of Land Druid. The last Dungeon Dragon set, we got Circle of Dreams Druid. Uh, this is one and a green for a 1-1 one, one Gnome Druid. When Circle of Land Druid enters the battlefield, you may mill four cards. Then it has Natural Recovery. When Circle of Land Druid dies, return target land card from your graveyard to your hand. Not bad. Cloakwood Hermit, two and a green, legendary enchantment background. Commander creatures you own have, at the beginning of your end step, if a creature card was put into your graveyard from anywhere this turn, create two tapped 1-1 one, one green squirrel tokens. Squirrel cards are fun. People love building squirrel decks. This is a great... Hard to put in a squirrel deck if you have a commander that cares about squirrels. This is great. Look into it. Cloakwood Swarm Keeper is one green for a 1-1 one, one elf ranger with gathered swarm. Whenever one or more tokens enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Cloakwood Swarm Keeper. That's pretty good. So you want to uh, sw play a Swarm Keeper in your Volo deck, in your Tokens deck, in your Squirrel deck, in anything that's going to make a bunch of tokens. I'd say that's uh, a par card, if not a little bit above par. Colossal Badger. This guy looks furious. 
Five and a green for a 6-5 Badger. When Colossal Badger enters the battlefield, gain three life. Not bad. Choose, uh, it also has Dig Deep, a sorcery adventure for one and a green. Choose target creature, mill four cards, then put one one counter on that creature for each creature card milled this way. So you can pump something up and then play your badger afterwards. Uh, next up, we've got Draconic Muralists. Three and a green for a 4-3 Dragon Bard. When Draconic Muralist dies, you may search your library for a dragon card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Damn. So they're painting a mural, but really what they're doing is summoning a dragon. Red Linoworm. L Linorm? Red Linorm. I don't know why I put an, a W in that word. Because the end is O-R-M. That's why. Six and a green for a seven six snake dragon. Dread Linorm can't be blocked by creatures with power three or less. And it has scale deflection as an instant adventure for three and a green. Put two one one counters on target creature and untap it. It gains hexproof until end of turn. That's big. That's a big that's a big boy. Oh, uh, we've got more druids. Druid of the Emerald Grove. Three and a green for a 2-2 two -two Dwarf Druid. Oh, green dwarfs. Sword of New. When Druid of the Emerald Grove enters the battlefield, search your library for up to two basic land cards. Reveal them, then roll a d20. Not basic forest, basic land, so that's a big bonus. Uh, if you get a one out of nine, put those land cards into your hand, then shuffle... Uh, 10 to 19, put one of those cards onto the battlefield and the other into your hand, then shuffle. And if you roll a 20, put both those cards onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. Pretty good. I like it. Four mana for a 2-2, two -two, not great. Four mana for a 2-2 two -two that gets you two lands. Quite a bit better. Uh, Druidic Ritual, two and a green for a sorcery. You may mill three cards, then return up to one creature card and up to one land card from your graveyard to your hand. That's par, slightly subpar. Earthquake Dragon, look at that guy. Jesus. My lord. 14 mana and a green. 14 mana. Um, okay. 14 green for a 1010 elemental dragon. This spell costs X less to cast, where X is the total manual value of dragons you control. So you could cast this 1010 flying trample dragon for just one green. You have 14 mana worth of dragons on the board already. That's insane. Am I building a dragon deck? I think so. Uh, it has Flying and Trample, just in case I forgot to mention that this card is fucking insane. Uh, for two and a green, you can sacrifice a land and return Earthquake Dragon from your graveyard to your hand. So it's unkillable. You need to exile this dragon, what this card says. Exile this or die. They should have just written that on the card. Emerald Dragon for four green green. You get a four four flying trampled dragon. Yeah, uh, your base dragon. And then it has Dissonant Wave for two and a green. It's an instant adventure. Counter target activated or triggered ability from a non creature source. That's pretty good. I think at the end of the day, you're paying. Three mana to counter an ability, and then six mana for a four-four flyer with trample. It's not stellar. So I'd probably put it at about a par. Uh oh yeah, this guy. Next up we've got Aranus Gloomstalker. Two and a green for a three-three halfling ranger with death touch. Whenever Aranus attacks, return target land card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Choose a background. Interesting card. I kind of wish it was gloomier. 
returning land is fun, but it'd be fun if it returned, like, I don't know, a creature with three mana value or less. Um, or a creature with um, Aranus's power in mana value or less. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's fun. It's fine. Fine. Edder cab. Look at this chunky boy. What? That is a spider beast? Okay. Edder cab is four and a green for a two five spider beast with reach. This chunky boy reaching out for you. That's terrifying. Uh, it has web shot for two and a green. It's an instant adventure. Destroy target creature with flying. That's a pretty standard. Um, green card and then you attach it to this creepy chunky bean shaped spider boy that's a magic card that is a magic card uh, explore the underdark for four and a green sorcery search your library for up to two basic land cards and or gate cards put them onto the battlefield tapped then shuffle you take the initiative that's pretty cool not only does it say basic lands so you can get um so you can get cards that aren't forests that's automatically great um but then it also says gate cards we will get to gates in in a little bit i'm sure um and it gives you initiative sure it's five mana it's a little bit pricey but for um for that much mana fixing you, you're probably going to cast that on turn 5 or turn 3 if you've got some mana rocks. That's, that's pretty good. Next we've got Giant Ankheg. Ankheg? 6 green green for an 8-8 eight, eight insect with Trample and Ward 2. Other creatures you control have Ward 2. That's just mean. That's just mean. Halson, Emerald, Arch Druid, three and a green for a 2-4 Elf Druid. You may pay one. The activated ability is pay one until end of turn. Target token you control becomes a green bear creature with base power and toughness 4-4 four, four, in addition to its other color types. Choose a background. So he's an, a Druid that turns things into bears. Druids usually only turn themselves into bears, but, uh, you know, this guy has it both ways, I guess. Hardy Outlander, one in a green for a legendary enchantment background. Commander creatures you own have whenever this creature attacks a player. If no player has more life than that player, each target creature you control gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is this creature's power. That's pretty good. Again, this, um, you know, attacking the person with the most health thing is worded really weird. Whenever this creature attacks a player, it should say, whenever this creature attacks a player, if that player has the most health or most life amongst players, another target creature you control gets plus X plus X until end of turn. I just feel like it was worded so awkwardly. Uh, we've got another orb of dragon kind. This is the jade one. Maybe there was one in each color. And I'm just misremembering. Uh, this is two and a green for an artifact. Tap it to add a green. When you spend this mana to cast a dragon creature spell. It enters the battlefield with an additional 1-1 one, one counter on it. And gains hexproof until your next turn. Pretty good. They can't. Immediately murder your dragons. Uh, Jahira, friend of the forest. Two and a green for a 2-3 human elf druid legendary creature. Uh, tokens you control have tap to add for add green. Add forest. This is pretty good. This is uh, Lanawar Elves the Commander. You had to have seen that coming, right? I think it's pretty good. I think lots of people are going to play that card. 
Jahira's Respite. Four and a green for an instant. Search your library for up to X basic land cards, where X is the number of creatures attacking you. Put those cards onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. Prevent all con combat damage that would be dealt this turn. Wow, this card is great. So it's Fog. Prevent all combat damage. And you get X lands. Up to X lands. So it's not a must. So if someone builds an army of 10 one, one, one white soldier tokens or whatever. Or squirrels. And they attack you with 10 creatures. You cast this for 5. You get 10 lands. And none of those creatures do damage to you. Great. Love it. Lurking green dragon for three and a green. Four, four dragon creature with flying. Lurking green dragon can't attack unless defending player controls a creature with flying. Oh. Interesting. Territorial, scary, no further notes. Reads Volo's field notes. Interesting. Interesting. I think that's probably par-ish. Four mana for a 4-4 four, four flyer that can't attack, depending on what your opponents have. That's not amazing. Majestic Genesis, six green green for a mythic sorcery. Reveal the top X cards of your library, where X is the greatest mana value amongst of a commander you own on the battlefield or in the command zone. You may put any number of permanent cards from amongst them onto the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So eight, eight mana play anything from the top X cards of your library. That's pretty good. Uh oh, lawsuit pending. Master Chef. Two and a green for a legendary enchantment background. Okay, I will say, and I don't know why I've waited this long to bring it up, but the fact that all of these background cards have an obvious protagonist in them and you never get to see their face is like beyond brilliant in Art Brief's work. Whoever came up with that brief is amazing. You deserve a raise. It's such a small little touch, but because you're attaching this background to a character whose face you can see, us as humans automatically are able to picture them doing that thing because there's no face in this photo, in this art. We don't, we don't know what they look like, so they could look like our person. I think that's fantastic. I've noticed I noticed it a while back when we were in blue, and I think it's just great. It's a great idea, great execution. This one in particular is very clever with their hiding of the face. I love it. Hands down. Ten out of ten. Would congratulate again. Uh so Master Chef is a, a background. Commander creatures you own have this creature enters the battlefield with an additional one one counter on it, and other creatures you control enter the battlefield with an additional one one counter on them. So he's pumping people up. The chef is feeding them, they're getting stronger. We're swinging with big boys. Uh the next is Monster Manual, a very famous thing in Dungeons and Dragons. I own multiple. They're great. You should read them. They're very interesting. Uh, Monster Manual is three and a green for an artifact with pay two and tap. You may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. So for four mana, you play this artifact. And then for two mana, so six mana total the first time. Uh, you get to cast any creature in your hand. Not cast it. Just put it onto the battlefield. It, it exists now. Six mana. On your next turn, when this untaps, you get to pay two mana and play any creature from your hand onto the battlefield. 
we could go back and that earthquake dragon that costs 18 bajillion colorless mana you could pay it too you could cast that creature for two mana you could cast any giant green or whatever creature colors fit your commander profile you can cast any of them for two mana this card is disgusting disgusting this is mono i mean it doesn't even have to be mono green this is just stompy personified this is an instant kill if you're ever playing against anyone that's playing green you kill monster manual as soon as it comes out you cannot let them use this ability um unless they don't have two mana up and you can let it sit there for whatever uh it also has an adventure on it so zoology study for two and a green you can mill five cards then return not can mill you have to mill five cards then return a creature card milled this way to your hand so the adventure sorcery hopefully puts one of your best creatures into the graveyard which you can then put in your hand and then next turn when you play this from its adventure you've got your best creature in your hand this is setup payoff abundant value this is the perfect artifact card it's great it's perfect don't change it um next we've got my iconic spore tender yeah more fungus people three and a green for a four one fungus with invest infesting spores uh when my iconic spore tender enters the battlefield destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment pretty good four one for four with kill target artifact or enchantment i think that's par that's par all the way down nature's lore is two and a green for a sorcery search your library for a forest card put it onto the battlefield and shuffle pretty standard uh green ramp overwhelming encounter three green green for a sorcery creatures you control gain vigilance and trample till end of turn then roll a d20 if you roll a one through nine creatures you control get plus two plus two if you roll a 10 through 19, put two 1-1 one, one counters on each creature you control. If you roll a nat 20, put four 1-1 one, one counters on each creature you control. That's just green. Green bash your face in with big ass creatures. It's the perfect example of green beat your face in. It's good. Owlbear cub. Oh my god. Look how cute he is. He looks so grumpy. He's just sitting in the rain. Ooh. Owlbear cub is two and a green for a 3-3 three, three bird bear. And it has an ability mama's coming. Pardon me. Uh, when Owl Bear Cub attacks a player who controls eight or more lands, look at the top card, the top eight cards of your library. You may put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield tapped and attacking that player. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Oh my god, Owl Bear Cub is stupid. Whenever Owlbear Cub attacks a player who controls eight or more lands. You're looking like obviously this is a three mana three three. Which isn't very prolific near the like mid to late stages of a commander game. But the fact that assuming all of your opponents have eight or more land in play. You get a free creature off the top eight cards of your library every time you attack. That's amazing. That's broken. That's that is stupid. Stupid amounts of nutty. 
Uh, okay, we've got Owlbear Shepherd. Two minute green for a 1 4 Goblin Druid. At the beginning of your end step, if creatures you control have total power 8 or greater, draw a card. Not bad. Poison the Blade. One and a green for an instant. Target creature gains death touch till end of turn. Draw a card. I like it. I wish it was one mana. One mana gives something death touch till end of turn. Draw a card. I mean, I guess the draw a card makes it... Plus one, even. Like, I guess two mana for both of those things is fine. It's good. It's going to be played... Not in my decks, because if I'm playing green, I'm playing poison and death touch anyway. Uh, Predatory Impetus. So this is a green Impetus card. Four and a green for an enchantment aura. Enchanted creature gets plus three, plus three. Must be blocked if able and is goaded. Must be blocked if able and is goaded. So this one doesn't really incentivize you to put it on another player, another player's creature. I mean, I guess it does because it's forcing that other player to attack someone else. And when they do attack someone else, your other opponent has to throw something in front of it because it has to be blocked. That's pretty good. Raised by Giants, five and a green for a legendary enchantment background. Command creatures you own have base power and toughness 10-10 and are Giants in addition to their other types. Whoa. Well, imagine if Finn the Fangbear had a partner on it. I would just put this in my Finn the Fangbear deck. And then all I have to do is hit them once. That was a pretty good background. Saddle of the Cavalier, two and a green for an equipment artifact. Equipped creature gets plus three, plus three, and can't be blocked by creatures with power three or less. Equip three. I like equipment cards like this because it's like you have to imagine putting a saddle on like a a goblin or a dwarf or a dragon, and like that's just funny to me. It's an okay card. Uh, next up, we've got Scaled Nurturer. One and a green for an O2 Dragon Druid with tap to add green. When you spend this mana to cast a dragon, you gain two life. It's pretty good. Obviously, a go-to, a must-have in your uh, green-red dragon deck that we've slowly been building while we've read out all these cards. Next up, we've got Sharpshooter Elf. Two and a green for a uh, star two elf ranger with reach. Sharpshooter's Elf. Sharpshooter's Elf power. Sharpshooter Elf's power is equal to the number of creatures you control. When Sharpshooter Elf enters the battlefield, it, it deals damage to... It deals damage equal to its power to target creature with flying and opponent controls. All right, so it's got a little bit of setup, but it's basically a three mana kill a flyer, hopefully. And then you've got this reach kind of blocker sitting back. I like it. I would say that's above par. I probably wouldn't put it in my dragon deck, but I would put it in an owl bear cub deck. Uh, Sylvanus' Invoker. Two and a green for a 3-2 Dragon Druid with Conjure Elemental. Another 8 mana ability. Untap target land you control. It becomes an 8-8 eight, eight Elemental creature with Trample and Haste until end of turn. It's still a land. That's pretty cool. Uh, Scanos Dragonheart. Four and a green for a 4-4 Dragon Ranger legendary creature. When Scanos Dragonheart attacks, it gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the greatest power amongst other dragons you control and dragon cards in your graveyard. 
Choose a background. Choose a background. Well, this guy has a dragon heart, so he gets beefier depending on how beefy your dragons are. I like it. Skull Winder. Two and a green for a 1 3 snake with death touch. Love it. Need one. When Skullwinder enters the battlefield, return target card from your graveyard to your hand, then choose an opponent. That player returns a card from their graveyard to their hand. Not, I mean, I would pay that. If I had Skullwinder in, like, my Finn the Fangbear deck, I needed to get Finn back out. I, I would play that. Or something. Like, Finn would be my commander at that point, so I would probably not... Put Finn in the graveyard. Return it to your hand. Yeah. I mean, I guess I could. Then it would be cheaper to cast and, instead of uh, paying commander tax or anything. I like it. I like green creatures with death touch. Split the spoils. For two and a green, it's a sorcery. Exile up to five target permanent cards from your graveyard and separate them into two piles. An opponent chooses one of those piles. Put that pile into your hand and the other into your graveyard and uh, piles can't be empty. It's an interesting card. They've done this before. This design isn't new, but it's you know, it's interesting. Split the spoils is a fun little, uh, you know, flavor win. This half is yours. These halves are mine. That's pretty funny. XL5 target permanent cards from your graveyard and separate them. Hmm. I mean, at least you know which five cards are in the two piles. It's not like a complete shit show uh traverse the outlands four and a green for a sorcery search your library for up to x basic land cards where x is the greatest power amongst creatures you control put those cards onto the battlefield tapped then shuffle pretty good underseller my sonic myconic two and a green for one two fungus Whenever Underseller enters the battlefield or dies, create a 1-1 one, one green Sabreling creature token. And you can tap Underseller to add one mana of any color. Love these fungus boys. I don't know why. Just love them. Undermountain Adventurer. Oh, this is the Adventurer for green. Three and a green for a 3-4 Giant Warrior with Vigilance. When Undermountain Adventurer enters the battlefield, you take the initiative. Um, you can tap him to add two green, but if you've completed a dungeon, you get six green instead. Why wouldn't they just put the six pips on there? I wonder if they have a formatting rule where they never put six pips next to each other. Because usually it's like colorless mana number next to Wooberg is I think like the biggest I've seen. No, no, I've seen at least in creature, in card cost, I've seen double white, double blue, double black, double red, double green. That's 10 mana. So I wonder what, it looks like they would have had the space to put six green pips there. Anyway, the cards are right. Wilson refined grizzly. Look at this. Boy, just drinking potions. One and a green for a 2-2 two -two bear warrior. This spell can't be countered. It has vigilance, reach, and trample, and ward two. That's just a good bear. That is a fortified bear right there. I love it. Above par for me. You look upon the Tarrasque. Four and a green instant. Choose one. Run and hide. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to you and creatures you control this turn. Or gather your courage. Target creature gets plus five, plus five, and gains indestructible until end of turn. All creatures your opponents control able to block this creature do so. It's interesting. I like the Tarrasque card. I think it's uh, a little spicy. 
one over here so the wall um it's a little spicy it's it's fun to play with it's not fun to play against i like this uh run and hide or gather your courage uh they reprinted you meet in a tavern which is great because uh it's a really good card i think a lot of people had a weird feeling about it when it first came out it being four mana and sorcery speed but uh turns out there's a place for it in standard at least uh two and green green for a sorcery and you get to choose one uh form a party you can look at the top five cards of your library you may reveal any number of creature cards put them into your hand put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order or you can start a brawl which means creatures you control get plus two plus two until end of turn either of those are great one of them gets you a specific creature out of a pretty good choice of cards um this this card can whiff but if you're playing green uh stompy creatures dragons whatever this card is going to find you something more often than not